Welcome to the In Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm Justin Minot here with Dave Gold. Dave? Hi, uh, Justin, you're coming to us from our West Coast division today, is that right? <laughs> yep, yep. Way out in Ramona, California, having a great time. And we are here with Eric Surface from Alps Insights, a beautiful human doing beautiful work. Eric, give us a bit of the background story. How did you even end up as an entrepreneur in business at all? Give us some of that journey. Wow, that that journey. Well, first of all, thank you, Justin and, and Dave, for having us or having me on the, the the podcast and allowing me to kind of talk about the story and to talk about our company and our journey to where we to where we are right now. And so, when I was in graduate school, and I won't say how many years ago, but I was in graduate school. Uh, I had an opportunity. I had done an internship with Caterpillar uh, over in Clayton, North Carolina, and I was uh, I was working on my PhD in industrial and organizational psychology, and I had done an HR internship with them, and I had developed an internal survey for them, and they asked me to come back the next summer as a consultant and do that survey again, and so I had already moved on and I was doing a research fellowship with the Army Research Institute for the Social and Behavioral Sciences. And so I talked about it with another graduate student uh, and we did, who's a friend of mine, and we just decided, hey, let, let's do this project and it, as a learning experience. And then we said, hey, this was kind of fun. Let's start a, let's start a consulting business as a, just to, to learn. And we started picking up projects. And then when I finished and did a postdoc with the, the military, or down, down at Fort Bragg working with Army Special Forces, when I finished that after a year, they said, hey, we like this kind of research-based insights, so yeah. we're gonna put this out as a contract to, for bid, and you know, I said, well, I have a company, so I'm gonna bid on the contract, and so that's really what got us started, wow. or got my journey started through uh, doing consulting and applied research for you know up up until the last couple of years, and then, in the 2013-14 time frame, there were the budget cuts and the sequester, and we, our business went from doing about around four million in revenue from consulting and research projects to doing about one overnight. And so oh, yeah. we had to lay off about 60% uh, of our, our workforce. And although I think we did it really well, it was really painful to have to lay off really good people who were doing good work for you that you know, nothing but their own, own fault because we were very focused on one segment of the marketplace. Right. And, you know, it's that old adage that you're so busy working in your business instead of on your business. And so that that taught me, the of being in business there taught me a lot of lessons over the years about what, what not to do. And, and at that point, we started looking for what, how we could grow and do something that was more scalable than boutique consulting. And we had uh, some really interesting um, analytics products that we had developed based off of some research uh, with some of our clients doing training. So things around helping them use data, data to improve the, the effectiveness of their training in real time, yeah. to, to improve the quality of instruction, to improve its impact. And you know, we did a little bit of exploration. It took us a couple of years to figure it out. We looked at different markets and things, and then we decided, okay, we're going to build an analytics platform. And so the last two years, um, I've really been focused with this new company, Alps Insights, on building this analytics platform. And our real goal is to, to help people use their data. So to collect the right data, to integrate that data, to provide that data to the and insights from that data to people at the right time, either in the process or later, so they can improve learning, they can improve its impact. You know, we all spend in, a, a more enormous amounts of time learning. Uh, millions of hours a year is spent on learning. Billions of dollars is spent on learning. Most of that does not fully accomplish what it's intended to accomplish. And there's many different reasons for that. And one of those, is, you know, one of the ways that I think we can help improve that is by unleashing the data that or the value that's trapped in the data. Yeah. Because there's a lot of information to improve the process. There's a lot of information to improve the impact. But it oftentimes, if you look at, say, let's take something as simple as the surveys that people do at the end of courses that everybody do that's ubiquitous. You know, most people treat them as a check the box activity. Well, if you think about them a little bit more thoughtfully, you can design them well, 
and you can actually use that data. A lot of folks don't even look at that data or they collect them on paper and right. still, and you can't do anything with the data. So what we want, want to think about is how can you collect the right things from the right stakeholders at the right time and then integrate it with other data and seamlessly deliver that to people to make better decisions. Right. That, it you know, actually inform your decision making process. Right. That's that's beautifully said. Yeah. And so, Eric, so I mean, everyone knows they should be collecting and mining and paying more attention to their data than they are. What what what's this? What's the secret sauce that you guys bring to the table? So I, I think we have a lot of experience and a lot of expertise. There's, there's, a hun there's over 100 years of research and learning, and we've been doing a lot with data and data collection. And we think about this in a very deep way, whereas there are a lot of models that have been there since the 50s. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but Kirkpatrick, the Kirkpatrick model with the levels, these are the things that you're supposed to measure about your training programs. And they're not bad things to measure. I mean, people build on them, they do that, but they're basically taxonomy of, of, of criteria, right? So one of them is learning, obviously. Another one's like res behavior and results, th things of that nature. The, the problem is, is that no one ever says in these models what you do with these to improve them. It's, all, it's, it's, the, it's what they, when we look at it, we think about it and we help say, okay, what, who are you want to support with your data? So do you want to support the learner? Do you want to support the instructor? Do you want to support the program manager, the business manager, or the, the, the lead business leader? And we say, hey, okay, how do they, their role in this is what? And so what data do they need to, to do that role better? And what we found in this was, was really quite, very simple. Everybody is interested, regardless of what your role, what your objectives are in the learning and development process, two things that you want to do. One is, how well am I doing or how well is my, are my students doing or how well is my company doing or my, my, my program doing and how can I improve? And so that's what we've really kind of geared our thinking around is how do we help you do your job in this process better? Because, hey, if you're doing your contribution, if you're an instructor, you're a learner, you're a business, you know, you're somebody back on the job, manager back on the job who's supposed to facilitate people, you applying this new knowledge to get the gain in the organization what do i need to know to to help them or to help that process be successful what do i need to know to improve it that's brilliant that is absolutely brilliant so what are some of the applications um, that you could see for the products that you have right now who would really benefit from this oh, well i i i think anybody who who manages a portfolio uh, of learning and development activities, whether it be classroom, virtual classroom, online courses that are, uh, you know, the, what they, the traditional computer-based training, mm -hmm. you know, basically anything where you want data to help you make better decisions about it. And so you think That's of, data. you think about why you collect data, you collect data to, to show the impact, to demonstrate that you're doing what, what you say you're doing to improve the effectiveness, to make sure that the learning is aligned with business needs, to promote and market the learning. Though anybody who's engaged in those activities, whether or not I'm working in an organization and I'm the learning and development person or the chief learning officer or the, the program manager, or if I'm a company that sells learning products or, or training to other people, I can help improve my offering and I can use it to market it or I can look and see which learners had a poor experience and then use it to go after and, and follow up with them and offer them something to, to come back and, and try it again so they have a good experience. Love so it. there's a lot of different things that you can do with the, with the data. And I'll say, you know, there's a lot of talk about right now in the current situation about law enforcement training. And one of the things that you look at when you see all of this is, are they training the right things? Right? Are they are they training them well? Are are that is that are they actually applying those on the on the job? Is there a climate where they can apply those on the job correctly? In other words, do supervisors support it? Do their peers support it? Do they have the resources? Does the organization support it? So I think in listening to all that's going on right now, it's a it's a huge part of the solution but it can't be part of the solution by itself because you have to have all these other systems that work with it to be able to be transformative in an organization. Sure. So there, 
So we, 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 so back to the kind of the question is specifically is anybody who needs to improve their training processes or is interested in demonstrating their impact, our product can help them. So we, what we, we love to do, we talked about before is solve your biggest problem, but assuming you have any, you know, if not, just make one up and we'll pretend you have one. <laughs> we did, I want to ask you one question. It's because we, yes. we do so many entrepreneurs in so many different <laughs> shapes and sizes and stuff. Are you, so, you know, you're, you're kind of academic going after your PhD, working in the military, and now you find yourself as an entrepreneur. Does that, does that, does it feel right? I mean, does it feel like you were just a born entrepreneur and this was always where you'd ended up or is it just kind of, you found yourself here and you're surprised by it? Uh, I, no, I, I, I always was going to work for, uh, work for myself. I used to, I was that kid who to make extra money, uh, I would sell like Christmas cards and wrapping paper and yeah. stuff door, door to door. And I used to cut people's lawns to make money. And, you know, I, I, I did all the, the hustle. And when I had the opportunity to start my own business, um, you know, one of, one of the things I'll say is my grandparents weren't college educated, but they were uh, very entrepreneurial. They had their they had their own businesses. You know, they had like my my grandmother ran a small restaurant in a rural area for almost forty years, and so probably not anything that's big big in success. But I had these role models, and their it's like their biggest thing was they wanted their children to be educated so they didn't have to work as hard mm -hmm. as they did. So my parents were part of that first generation in their families to go to college. And I heard growing up the, the whole entire time that learning is transformative, right? That you should focus on getting an education. And one of the things I learned from my father, who was a college football coach and uh, professor or teacher, he did, never had a PhD, had a master's degree. So, but the, he would work very hard at the junior college with most of their kids were first time college, uh, first person in the family to go to college. And he would work in with his football players to basically say, look, you got to go to study hall, got to go to class, you got to do this stuff. And he would sit down after the season was over. I remember this very, and this was the day before personal computers and everything. So all this was by hand. He had all of these stats from games and from practices and study halls and the grades and everything. And he would sit down and he would compile these letters and he would write coaches at four-year schools. And he would say, look, this is a, a great player. You should take a look at this person so they can continue this education. He'd work really hard mm. to get them to that next step. And, and, you know, when he, my father passed away, there were so many people that came back to the memorial service who were his former players and talked about the, how much of a difference that made in their lives, being able to continue their education. So I thought about that. I don't often look backwards. Yeah. And I thought about why I do what I do. And it's because I heard that message growing up that education and learning were very important and they can, you know, work. I heard this so many times, work smarter, not harder, you know, type, type of thing. So that's what I'm trying to help people do with our product is use your data to, to, to run your learning smarter, not wasting all this time. Because I, right now I look at people running these processes, they said 30 hours extracting minimum data value from data with running all these logistics of evaluation and surveys and stuff. And we could do, our system could do that for them in, with 30 minutes worth of work. Well, that's a great, it's a great, lineage. it's a great lineage. And I think it, I, my guess is we're going to work that it, whatever problem it is you're trying to solve, what you just told us is going to help us solve it. So, okay. Let's see. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. free consulting. This is great. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll don't worry. We'll find a way <laughs> to even out the spreadsheet. Okay, so right, right now you mentioned that you when before we got on that you had a lot of clients lined up for like March and April, and then I think something happened around mid March, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I've heard rumors about it. Yeah, so the, the world the world sort of yeah the world changed a little bit, right? So we we had been working on a a product launch. We we were fortunate enough that we had some of our consulting clients that in the military that came with us. And we're helping us and using the software, piloting it. And we we did an official launch in February at a conference, the uh, Association for Talent Development, their technology conference out in San Jose in early February. We did. Uh, we were one of the sponsors. We did a couple of demo sessions. I did an educational session, and we got double-digit numbers of sales meetings scheduled out of that for March and April to have 
almost all of them canceled the second week of March, right? And a lot of folks are still telling us we're interested, but our, our business right now is not buying anything. We've got to freeze or we're not, not really doing that much training now. Um, so we're kind of in a, in a limbo situation. I do see things. Um, I've had a couple of conversations, a couple of people reach out are starting to pick up and I'm actually going to start reaching out to folks this month. I kind of finally feel comfortable that we've gotten to a point where people will not be annoyed by a, a sell, a sales call or me reaching back out to them to, because, you know, people have fi are figuring out what their new normal is right now. And so I think it, it's good. So my, my biggest problem is I felt like things were going really well and then all of a sudden they stopped. So we, we've got a handful of clients, uh, there's some interest, we've got a product that we're constantly working on and evolve, evolving down our roadmap. Eventually we're gonna hit, you know, bring in AI, we're not quite there yet, but we've got a, a wealth of data from our previous work that we can use to train the AI. So I, I feel like we'll have, a re that'll be a big advantage for us to jump forward uh, when we do that. So my, my biggest challenge is how to, how to approach and sales and gain traction in the current environment um, when right now everything is up up in the air and, and particularly because a lot of our clients have or, or people we've talked to have a large component of their training that's in person and right now that is on hold or moved to virtual and they haven't really made that a formalized process because mm -hmm. they don't know if it's going to stay virtual or if it's going to come back so that, that's kind of my biggest challenge is figuring out how to how to sell to people right now because you know I don't like it when I get sales calls right now. I'm still like I can tell Justin is just he's so he's so primed for this. So <laughs> go ahead, you go. Oh, okay, you. so um, so I guess I would take my first crack at it is there's on one hand that you're maintaining these relationships with people that are going to be buying in the future. Um, people that had gone mostly in person and are switching to virtual. My first curiosity is who are the people that have been virtu doing virtual trainings already from pre-corona who could use help with exactly what you're doing and tapping into that market? Um, because I do know a lot of companies are, especially in this time where people are not working in the office or they're working from home more actually leaning more into trainings right now and investing in to right. their their staff so that's my first curiosity is who's so, already so, doing the virtual type of work so i so it, and you know if you look at it over the past few years moving to virtual uh synchronous in other words live instructors uh mm -hmm. has been one of the fastest segments of the of the the training market if you look yeah. at the the numbers on it and we actually have a client that does o over 500 classes virtually a year. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of our military clients. And we've been doing their training for years uh, before in the consulting model and now in the software model. But mm -hmm. um, so we have a lot of experience there. I think the big issue for us is the marketplace is big and you don't necessarily, I, you know, our product is, is it fully developed. So there are certain people's, evaluation and analytics practices that we fit really well and they're certain that we don't and so part of it is identifying who those are and approaching them and in terms of this is we've actually been looking at better integrations with some of the virtual platforms and so the the problem with a lot of this is you if you know about software development is there's a lot of you have to use an API Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these companies, their APIs are either not published or they're just awful, just mm -hmm. absolutely awful. We gave up on Zoom because of, of just how much of a mess that it was. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a lot more success in our proof of, of concepts working with Blue Jeans, which I think was just acquired by Verizon. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to be doing some more of that, but you, we don't have to have that seamless integration to use our product with those platforms it, it just would make it easier for you know folks to folks to do that but one of the pivots that we've done is so qr codes yeah. um we actually now have part of our application you can generate a class or course or event specific qr code that you can now put up on a screen take a picture with your mobile phone and do your survey right there so it eliminates when we get back to 
you know, in-person training and these big groups, it eliminates the need to have to handle paper surveys and do any of that. And also, I, I don't know if you do a lot of continuing education, but a lot of the continuing education courses re require you to stand in line, sign in, stand in line, sign out. And we can do, we have a whole attendance thing that we can do with QR codes now. So you just put a QR code up, have somebody take a picture of it, and you don't need an app at all. We do it totally but browser based through the through yeah, whatever that, scanner that's is on your phone. So we've been thinking about it. Yeah. So Eric, it kind of just ties in that just confirms something I was thinking when you were talking. And I did a podcast yesterday with uh Ryan Diener, who runs a holistic health, very successful holistic health practice up in Maryland. And when I was listening to all the transitions that are happening right now as he's going back in in realizing no one knows how to manage that. So, so from a top level to me, it's like I could see because there's so much data, so many companies doing data mining in terms of differentiation, the question I asked at the beginning, like what's your secret sauce? I see an opportunity to differentiate yourself and to pivot kind of quickly in terms of instead of going to these people like, oh, I know I'm a sales guy and I'm coming out to you and you don't want to sell anything because you're not ready. How can I get you ready? You know, how can I mine the data that I have right now, the limited data that I have? Because everyone's trying to extrapolate from minimal data on what it's going to look like so every and so that's everybody's headache right now yeah and how can i help you not know i'm going to wait until you're on your feet again and then i'm going to sell into you but no you're in a transition period but got data i know how to go in there tell you what data that points you already you have collected limited ones are important how i can take those and help help you know help right. so you're making informed decisions coming out of this pandemic <laughs> i think that's brilliant in this position turn it to your advantage Take that niche, think about how you can take those data points. And then yeah. something you just said here was really interesting at the last point, because when Ryan was talking about some of the processes he has, he now has like car to treatment room that you never see. They, they, when they're there, they call in their car and they go right to the treatment room because they're able to pass through the normal things of having to, no, I'm not going to check in. And when I come out, I don't have to get my credit card. And just what you're saying right now, that ability to get people to get into a classroom without with minimal amount of contact is just a kind of, you know, kind of time sensitive or time appropriate product that you have. So I think just whatever the, the bottom line is just what is this opportunity in this moment? Yeah. Rather than Meeting the moment. Yeah. And so I think I, the big piece I, right I, now. I, I pre oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say I pre I appreciate that that advice because that that that's that's an interesting perspective on it. And another another piece of it that I think is really important to know is that we're about empowering all of your stakeholders or your or the people who are involved in the process because a lot of times the data is trapped with one person. That one person sees it, but it may need to be in different places. And so what we really focus on is the distribution of the data quickly to all the stakeholders. So if you imagine that QR code process, that data hits the system immediately and you're running a course out in California where you're at right now and, and Dave can immediately see the results of that in real time as it shows up in the system mm. here in North Carolina. You, you've got, everybody's got that access to the data in real time. So it, it really helps them. And the, the thing that we like to say is we're not a, a date, we're, we're not trying to take the place of data scientists we're actually trying to help everybody who's not a data scientist to use the data. You know, we're like a, an 80% solution for them. And the great thing from a data science perspective is that we collect, when we bring all this collect and bring all this data together in our system, it's clean. Mm -hmm. It's integrated around individuals or courses. So it's easy for analysis. So you can export the, export the data as a data scientist, analyze it, Come up with some new insights and then we have a dashboard builder where you can build dashboards and then push that back out to your users so they can use it in real time so we actually i think may help make data scientists more effective we're not trying to replace them uh we're not trying to replace learning management systems we pull data out of learning management systems. we're mm -hmm. trying to to really help everybody use data better in real time to make better decisions and to the point that we can do what you were just saying is make this a seamless, touchless process. We've really helped people, you know, kind of I take take that next step. So I, I really appreciate your comment on this. It just got me thinking about so many, so many different possibilities all of a sudden. Good. That that's yeah. why 
big bucks. Well, so, and really, really practically, just as one final piece of, and this is just kind of macro in your business, feeling into where you are right now. I think what you need most is proof of concept. Um, and what you need even more than proof of concept or one layer deeper, the, the step before that is you just need a couple small wins right now, man. You need a couple small sales, like get the traction you need to actually gain the confidence and start getting out there again and whatever. And so I would be looking at even down to, you know, the individual decision maker who runs their own online course, um, helping whoever people do whatever and getting data to that person to help them make their course better on even just an individual level, get some money in the bank, whatever, whatever that cost is. Um, but I would be looking at what is the lowest hanging fruit. You need some traction. You need a sale. You need like really just practically proof of concept, get it out there, get a test. Um, cause right now you're, you're kind of stuck back in tinkering in the garage mode and like building benefits and whatever. And, um, getting out to market, I think is so, so I, I, I think that that's a good, cause we have sort of, put, like I said, we've kind of put the stop on, on sales activities, but but, you know, I think we're actually fortunate because we do have several clients who, who have been very loyal clients and we've just mm -hmm. onboarded a new one new one. It's just not nearly what I was hoping for after we invested in the marketing sure. that, that we did. Right. So I, I think you're right. I think just getting back out there and getting the, 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 the appointments on the books. Yep small steps, small wins, you know, and, and I think it's time. I think, you know, folks are ready to, to start taking calls again and start talking about it. And especially, especially now with some of the, the, as, as we're starting to see what reopening looks like and other things like that, and people have gotten a quarter of results under their belt. They, they know what their businesses look like. Yeah, I, I think it's great. And I, I just add, we'll wrap it up. Is it, I think also what Justin's suggesting is you start taking down some squirrels instead of the elephants because the elephants are slower to move. The squirrels can handle it. So we may, that, that, those are the kind of small wins. But anyway, we, we, we'll, we'll push the pause on this, maybe continue this conversation for a couple minutes after we're done here too. Yeah, awesome. So Eric, Thanks, if, Eric. If people are interested in, find, how do they find you if they want to know more about your services? So we're, we're at uh, alpsinsights.com or I'm on LinkedIn and uh, Eric Surface uh, on LinkedIn and please reach out. Love to, love to talk with you about our products and services and learn about what you're doing with uh, your learning and development practice. Great. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Thank you.